Well, we're standing in Blackpool Transport's body shop. This building, as far as we can ascertain, was put up in 1927. The significance of the site is that we've been operating in and around this area since 1885. We were the first electric street tramway in the British Isles, and so our history obviously dates back um, to that period. Rigby Road is the operational depot for both the modern Palladium bus network, which is operated by Blackpool Transport, and it's also the operating centre for our Heritage Tram fleet, where we run our branded Heritage Tram tours. That's one of our Blackpool Transport's brands, which I set up in 2012. I think Blackpool has always had a love affair with the tram, there's no doubt about it. One of the key things is that, of course, unlike other cities and towns which were clogged with motor traffic, and Blackpool suffered the same in its inland routes, there was a situation existing where we had a complete tramway on its own right of way, which was operating along the seafront, and especially in the illuminations, without any conflict with the traffic whatsoever. Everybody was able to board a tram, and see the illuminations and get from A to B in the quickest, most effective way. So it continued to provide a most wonderful function as part of the transport network. It was in 1933 that General Manager Walter Luff came along. He was brought in basically by the council to eliminate trams and, and replace them with modern motor buses. But he looked at what they had and thought this is absolutely unique and integral to what we do. The figures, you know, were st stacked up very nicely and he convinced the council that they should keep them. Trams often ended up in farmers' fields because they were so well built. And when they were scrapped, obviously the wooden body, particularly the lower saloons, lent themselves to a multitude of uses. Sometimes they were quite handy to be used as a garden shed, sometimes for keeping your chickens in. Actually, a lot of them ended up as, as holiday caravans. So farmers were always looking to see how they could earn a little bit of extra money during lean times. And if you had a row of those in your field and you could let them out in the summertime for holiday makers, if your farm was so suitably located, then that's how a great many of them survived. We've got three trams that fall into that category effectively. Bolton 66, which is the only surviving Bolton tram car, which was preserved by a local group in Bolton uh, who still own it. They are the Bolton Tram Car Preservation Trust. They basically took the lower saloon out of a farmer's field and restored it and then rebuilt the three quarters that was missing. That took them 18 years. It was brought to Blackpool in 1981 for testing and it's never, it never left, basically. It's still running here. In about nine or ten years, it will have operated as long in Blackpool as it did on its, on its home system. The system closed in 1946. The other tram is the only surviving Lytham tram, which survived as a gypsy caravan on the sand dunes at St Anne's and then eventually went into preservation elsewhere. It ended up on the Middleton Railway of all places, where I think it was going to be used as a, a sort of site hut, uh, where the crews could have their sandwiches and store their tools. And then we have a Glasgow tram, which again ended up in a farmer's field. I think it was a holiday caravan, uh, and then ended up um, bought by a local preservation group in Glasgow with a view to restoring that. That was never done, and 30 years later they didn't quite know what to do with it, which is, to cut a long story short, how we came to have it. In the days when those tram cars were built, they used very good, well-seasoned hardwoods. Teak is a principal component of most tram body frames. It's, it's 95% of our entire fleet is made up of teak frames. It's very hard wearing, extremely durable because of the curing process that the timber went through in those days before they built it. And consequently, it just stands the test of time extremely well. There's hardly a tram in our fleet that is, averages about 80 years old that we haven't been able to save the entire frame. And even the ones that we've rebuilt are still running on their original chassis and framework, basically. There are lots of tram cars that have a standard design. So around the country, you know, there were key manufacturers who built trams for most networks. And a lot of them have a similarity. The liveries vary, or some have open balconies, some have open tops, some have enclosed tops. All of those variations make them interesting. Some have four wheels, some have 16. But you know, there's a familiarity with them. You don't want too many examples the same. And you don't want to sadly yourself with too many problems. So you know, I've got past the point of you know, wanting to save everything. There has to be a practical plan. And everything we do you know, has common sense behind it. So yes, I won't be rushing off to save that one. But I, I, I did feel very wistful as I watched the video. And in fact, I was almost reaching for the box of tissues to, to wipe my eyes afterwards. But it was so beautifully done. Um, but yeah, there's not a lot left of it, and, and really, you know, I think you've 
preserve the essence of what it is and I think it will probably just slowly disappear in the coming decades. You can't save them all, but I think if you can, you know, hold your head up high and say, we preserved this fleet of 48 tram cars, I think, you know, I'll, I'll rest easy in my bed. I think the Blackpool trams are special for two main reasons. The first one is their longevity. By some quirk of fate, they survived operating on their own tramway system for decades after most traditional tramways had closed down, and that is part of their charm. They are part of everybody's holiday experience because no matter what decade you come from, those trams have always been there, so you've got that feel-good factor. There's a nostalgia element that draw people back to them. They want to share that experience with their children and their grandchildren. Say, so this is the tram that I rode on when I I was a small child. Now you can do the same. So there's that nice element. The key thing is that Blackpool's tram cars are of mostly a unique design, particularly the 1930s fleet. They are completely Art Deco, which was the, the artistic design of its day, really. And our trams are quite unique by purely for decorative reasons to make them look nice. They follow that beautiful styling and design. So they are you know, beautiful to look at. They're beautiful pieces of art as well as beautifully crafted public transport vehicles. I think everybody's attracted to things that run on rails. The strange thing is, you know, you, you always have a certain confidence that you, you know you're attached to something quite physical. And also I think there's a certain uh, romanticism about a railway that runs through the public streets, because that's what it is. It's basically a light railway that actually goes past your house. And so it becomes a part of the culture. And I think it's that cultural aspect. So people coming to Blackpool are as steeped in it as the local residents because it's part and parcel of their holiday. They go to where they're going on the tram. Now they can have a pleasure ride on the vintage trams. We've got that remarkable combination. I once had a friend who collected radio sets. Uh, he didn't ever use them. They were all beautifully restored, but sat you know, in, a, in a lovely room. And I said, well, do you ever use them? Oh, no, I don't switch them on. Uh, it's, it's that difference between preserving something and actually enabling people to connect with it. So it's that connection with their heritage that's very important. It's just a piece of wood and timber and it might look beautiful on display. And yeah, so, so well and good, you know, let's preserve them. But let's actually fulfill the original function. And that's something that we do here really well. They're not only fulfilling their original function, but they're fulfilling that function, that purpose, their reason for existence on the tramway for which they were built. So I think they will go on forever.